Hello and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. We're glad to have you join us. I am Lydia Ochi. Determined to put a stop to the lackadaisical attitude of Nigerians on maintenance culture as bane of national development, President Muhammad Buhari has signed an Executive Order 11. The new policy document sets out guidelines for the maintenance of federal government buildings and assets in order to ensure the protection and lasting utilization of such critical investments. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo has details. Initiated by the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing and approved by the Federal Executive Council since 2019, the policy document sees maintenance of public buildings and facility management as a conscious economic driver through which skills of the technical and vocational institution graduates can be put into gainful and rewarding engagement. Executive Order 11, which ties maintenance directly to the economy, is put in place to ensure the fullest implementation and impact of the policy. Maintenance of assets is more than a culture. It is an economy from which many can prosper, and we must nurture and water that economy by policy and actions that create opportunities and inclusion for our people. It is my hope that this order will open the door and for small businesses and cottage industries. Already, the Office of the Head of Service of the Federation has approved the establishment of a department of the Federal Public Assets Maintenance as a vital step towards supporting the implementation of the policy described as unprecedented in the nation's history. While it is true that our economy has been diversified and the non-oil sector is leading in terms of contribution to the gross domestic product, the maintenance and facility management component of the services sector is an opportunity that is waiting to be maximized. By this order, I expect ministries, departments, and agencies to set up and ensure the operation of their maintenance departments and make necessary procurement for their maintenance in accordance with the provision of the Public Procurement Act. Apart from enhancing job creation for skilled and unskilled labor, other expected benefits of the new policy includes the expansion of opportunities for micro, small, and medium enterprises who produce and supply all of the tools and materials required to support maintenance. From the State House, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. The Senate is to investigate the immediate and remote causes of the failure of the Nigerian Super Eagles to qualify for the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. This followed a motion of urgent public importance by Senator Michael Nachi, which described the non qualification as unfortunate and which caused pain on some Nigerians. The Senate Committee on Youths and Sports is to engage relevant stakeholders to found, find out why Nigeria could not qualify for the biggest football event in spite of the huge sums of money made available to the team and to put measures in place to prevent fans from invading the pitch by fans in future matches. They say that the destruction will cost the government of Nigeria several millions of naira to either replace or effect repairs. I think there is an urgent need for this Senate, if possible, to intervene to see that our stadium across Nigeria are properly structured and made in such a way that future occurrence of fans invading the pitch or destroying the stadium will be prevented. The Excellency 
Uh, as a matter of fact, there has been lots of life that day in the stadium, but it was not man-made. To investigate the vandalization of facilities at the MKO Abiola National Stadium, Abuja, in the aftermath of the Super Eagles of Nigeria's failed bid to qualify for the FIFA 2022 World Cup bid. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee investigating unclaimed funds has directed concerned ministries, departments, and agencies of government to return all unremitted funds to the Federation account. This is the decision of the committee at its resumed investigative hearing. National Assembly correspondent Mobalaji Moribirin has the details. This committee was set up after the adoption of a motion at House Plenary to investigate infractions by commercial banks, no, no. ministries, departments and agencies of government over non-remittance of unclaimed funds to the Federation account, running into trillions of Naira. One of the objectives of the committee is to ensure that um, MDS of government, commercial banks, central banks, um, remit unremitted funds to federal government. From the document that you submitted earlier, you have been able to discover about 268 million that um, was not remitted between the period under review. Invited agencies at the investigation gave explanations on the allegations. The way that 260 something uh, million was uh, arrived at is obviously not how we calculate, we did our own calculation. We need to reaffirm 3.8, how we, how we arrived at that. So like you rightly said, I think we need some more time to go back and look at the figures you gave us. 3.8 billion. Well, figures don't lie. Submit your figures, not we want to go and come back, no. It was based on the responses received here that this committee came out with these uh, 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 responses. The lawmakers directed the affected organizations to reconcile their infractions immediately as it investigates other ministries, departments and agencies of government as well as commercial banks. From the National Assembly, Mobolaji, Mori Biri, NTA News. Chairman of the PDP Governors Forum and Governor of Sakoto State, Abinu Waziri Tambuan, has met with members of the National Assembly on the party's platform, declares his intention to contest the forthcoming presidential election. Timothy Yusuf has more. It was a separate meeting with the PDP National Assembly members. First, with the Senate caucus led by Minority Leader Inaya Baribi. Governor Tambuwal presented his presidential aspiration, saying contemporary challenges require contemporary solutions, especially in a challenging time like this the world over, including Nigeria. For our country to be repositioned, for our country to be rescued, and we begin now to rebuild our country. I present myself to consult with you and for us now to begin to find who that person is that can really uh, fly, um, fly the flag of our party. Meeting with the House of Representatives papers, Governor Tambua likened the visit to a homecoming, having served in the House for 12 years before becoming the governor of Sokoto State for about seven years now. If I go out publicly to say my reference or index in the House of Reps, I'm not wrong. I will not be wrong. Whoever wants to know me and understand my pan-Nigerian content should seek to find out my rules in the House of Reps for 12 years, 2003 to 2015. Members promised to take the right steps in the right direction at the appropriate time. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has reminded political parties to adhere strictly to the 14 items contained in the schedule of activities for the 2023 general elections. A statement by INEC National Commissioner for Information, Festus Okoye, expresses worry that no party has informed the Commission of the date of its primary, which begins from the 4th of April to 3rd June 2022. 
The statement adds that parties must adhere strictly to the principles of internal democracy, drawing from their constitutions, guidelines, the Electoral Act and other regulations and guidelines issued by the Commission. Their candidates for the 1,491 constituencies for which elections will be conducted in 2023 must emerge from democratic, transparent and valid primaries in line with the provisions of sections 29 and 84 of the Electoral Act 2022, where a political party fails to comply with the provisions of the Act and the conduct of its primaries, its candidates shall not be included in the election for the particular position in issue. Still on politics, the need for political zoning in the country is important to create a level of inclusion among ethnic and religious groups to guarantee fairness among different political players in the country. This was the position of experts on NTS Good Morning Nigeria while discussing politics of zoning. Butu Amila reports. 2023 general elections draw near. The issue of zoning is once again central and, as usual, contentious with implications for the stability of the country, particularly amidst political players. Guest on Good Morning Nigeria while analyzing the essence of politics and zoning in the country urged Nigerians to stop leaning on religious and tribalistic sentiments in bringing out the best candidate. Uh, when we become too emo emotive about it, uh, assigning tribal sentiments or ethnic sentiments to zoning, we, 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 we tend to eliminate, you know, merit. And we tend to also premise our discussion on wrong, wrong assumptions. Yeah, when you require leadership to provide certain special services that could take a, a particular sovereign nation to a level, sometimes zoning can be uh, uh, set aside. Some salient points on why political actors are opposing zoning were highlighted. You cannot, no matter how you look at it, separate achieving inclusiveness and guaranteeing stability in the political process. And the only way you can do that is by getting everybody feel that he has a stake. And if you want to get this in zone now, a lot of people who have been expecting, who have waited, who have been patient for eight years, become agitated. That will bring instability. They urge the need for political institutions to develop the country where collective interest overrides political interest in making certain decisions. In Abuja, Butua Miller, NTA News. As Nigeria continues to blaze a trail in research and adoption of modern biotechnology in crop production, Ghana, a sister West African country, is poised to understudy the Nigerian model. Consequently, scientists from Ghana have arrived at the country to learn the rudiments of the modern-day crop production. Musa Aliu has more. Nigeria is gradually moving away from the use of old know-how in crop production to a modern technology and biotechnology is being given priority with a view to improving yield and addressing challenges associated with weather, diseases and insect infestation. This therefore informed the development of improved variety of beans, maize and cotton through the use of biotechnology. A lot of farmers have given their testimonies in terms of wealth, creation, in terms of uh, yield, in terms of eradicating these that is uh, disturbing it. After it is because of these success stories that scientists from Ghana and are in Nigeria to broaden their scope so in modern farming technology. And here in this hall are scientists from the National Biotechnology Development Agency telling the success story of Nigeria's journey and the regulatory framework in the use of new modern farming techniques. Ghana is also a giant in biotechnology in the sense that you know they have a regulatory system that is functional and working. The Basin scientists applauded Nigeria scientists and requested for more support from Nigeria. Musa Aliyu, NTA News. You're still on to nationwide. We now go to Lagos and Kinda is waiting with more stories trending from that zone. Kinda? Hello, Lydia. Glad to have you join us in Lagos. 
Taxation is one of the many driving forces behind any nation's economy. Lagos is one of the state of the Federation said to be on the right track in its taxation policy. In this report, her correspondent examines the impact of taxation on national development. Taxation remains a critical source of revenue generation for the government to execute infrastructural projects. In a cosmopolitan city like Lagos, that is also the commercial nerve center of the nation. A large amount of the state resources is spent on facilities to ensure adequate security of lives and property, provision of other social amenities and modalities for ease of doing business. Lagos State came into adulthood when there was that uh, controversial, um, we told him of the local government um, council funds, and um, it forced the government of that day to look inwards into alternative means of generating revenues. And that has proven to be a very significant breakthrough uh, for revenue access to be able to go on to develop projects. Respectively, in the 2021 budget, tax consultants give reasons for the gap. The business environment is not conducive or, at the least, avoid tax. Although there are noticeable developmental projects within the state which signals judicious use of state resources, experts of the view that more needs to be done in the area of attitudinal change towards taxation, including exploration of other windows of revenue generation by the state. We still have quite a bit of work to do in respect to harmonization, implementation, and administration of our fiscal process within the state. The state government will then need to approach revenue collections and taxations um, with every sense of deliberation and every consideration, knowing fully well that these are um, lean margin. Performance market operators attribute to a robust investment in the capital market. Abolati Salami reports. As the best performing capital market with a market capitalization of over 25 trillion naira, and an all-share index of 46,000 basis points, the Nigerian exchange has maintained a positive outlook, thereby sustaining investors' confidence in the market. The nation's stock market, despite various uncertainty that characterized the business environment in previous years, has maintained a positive trajectory, gaining substantial growth in its key indicators. When the entire world the capital market went crash, our own was rather appreciating our market capitalization has risen to as high as 25 trillion naira. It's about the best market in the whole world in the year 2020-2021 and it remain one of the best capital market in the world today as we speak. With the resurgence of equities in the secondary market which started early in October 2021, when the Osher index became positive on the back of rising crude oil price, improved fundamentals of the economy. Expectations are high that as more foreign and domestic companies list on the market, chances of posting more gains are brighter. That market means there is need. And in as much as companies are able to innovate, they meet those needs, they'll be able to re re record good corporate performance. And those corporate performance is what drives, is one of the factors that drives market movement. And so you've seen in the last uh, few weeks, a lot of our companies listed on the exchange have been re releasing very, very fantastic corporate performance. And they're declaring good dividends. There are some of them are declaring bonuses. So investors are excited. They are increasing their participation. While the market is gaining more momentum in the capital market space, operators of the market have been charged to keep abreast of technical know-how in order to sustain the positive outlook. In Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTA News. And that's a bit from here in Lagos. We'll pause here for a break, after which Adebola in Ibadan will bring us more stories from that zone. But before then, we'd like to remind you that you can follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on YouTube at NTA News Online. You can also visit our Facebook page at NTA Network News, Twitter handle at NTA News Now, and on Instagram at NTA Network for updates. 
by Naja Registration and Telemart in partnership with NTA Television Enterprises Limited. The By Naja Project presents International Market Access Platform, BuyNaja.com, a one-stop e-commerce portal and public procurement referral for exclusively made in Nigeria products and services. The Telemart for buying and selling on television for company and product registration, participation, sponsorship, and adverts on Telemart. Call Acho on 080-9521-2547 or Sarah on 080-331-73233. Visit www www.buynija.com or www.ntatve.com.ng for product inspection, standards and quality assurance. Buy Niger Center, the arena, NTA headquarters, Abuja FCT. Buy Niger, Market Square, Mount View Mall, Life Camp, Abuja. Buy Niger, market access for entrepreneurs in the 36 states and the FCT from local to global. <laughs> All the thrills and all the action on Nigeria's biggest dance reality show. Glow Battle of the Year is on NTA every Sunday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. As the world advances, Samuel Adeboiga University, Ogwa Edo State, is poised to deliver world-class education rooted in strong academic traditions. In the colleges of law, basic and applied sciences, humanities, management and social sciences, Samuel Adeboiga University is building the next generation of leaders. Hurry now for 2021-2022 undergraduate and postgraduate admissions into any of our NUC fully accredited programs secure admission today in one of the fastest growing private universities in africa also note that the university runs diploma jupiter part-time and tuition-free programs for more information visit www.sau.edu.ng or call 0705-079-1226 samuel adekoyega university to nurture for discipline and excellence Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, and Voice of Nigeria, VONS, cordially invite general public to the 16th Annual Ramadan Lecture. Topic, Social Media, Effect on Morality. Guest speakers, Professor Ishak Olariwaju Oloyeti, Registrar, Joint Admission Matriculation Board, and Professor Ismail Shehu, Department of Political Science, ABU Zaria, under the chairmanship of architect Muhammad Namadi Sambu, GCON, former vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Special guest of honor, Right Honorable Oladimeji Pankoli, former speaker, House of Representatives. Royal Father of the Day, His Highness, Ambassador Ahmed Nubamali, Emir of Zazo. Chief Host, His Excellency, Marlon Nasser Ahmed Erufai, the Executive Governor of Kaduna State. Hosts, Marlon Yaqub Ibn Muhammad, Director General NTA, Dr. Mansur Liman, Director General FRCN, and Osita Okechuku, Director General, Voice of Nigeria. Date, Saturday, 9th April 2022. Venue, Lumana Multipurpose Center, River Close, Up Jabi Road East, Kaduna. Time, 9 a.m., Insha'Allah. Announcer, Organizing Committee. <laughs> Thank you for watching and welcome to Ibadan. For the 2023 general elections in Nigeria to be a success, especially in the area of coverage, media practitioners must bring professionalism to bear through verified and unbiased dissemination of information to the public. I NEC resident electoral commissioner in Kwara State, Atahir Madami, stated this during a parley with heads of various media organizations in Ilori, the Kwara State Capital. Ahmed Fulani reports. Rows of security agencies, political parties, traditional and religious institutions, and the media are no doubt integral to the success of elections. This is what prepared the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to organize a meeting with media executives to remind them of the expected roles ahead of the 2023 general elections. INEC resident electoral commissioner Atairu Madami wants journalists to remain non-partisan before, during, and after the elections. With the Electoral Act now, it has even made our job easier and better. 
we know the power of the media in changing the perception of people, especially during campaign by the politician. The media, to me, is the most powerful weapon that we need to live in peace in this country. Because, one, if the media misinform the public, that is a big problem. Questions bordering on the last general elections were raised with assurance to Putin's right ahead of next year's elections. Timetable for the 2023 general elections has been released by INEC and with commence February next year. Ahmad Fulani, NTA News. Adequate funding of the construction of Oyo Gumosho Ibadan Ifedo carriageways will ensure prompt inauguration within the scheduled period. This was the position of the Southwest Zonal Director of Federal Ministry of Works during a tour of construction sites in Oyo State. Shala Wahid completes the report. The 108-kilometer Ibadan Ife Expressway is presently undergoing total reconstruction as the bus state of the road attracted the attention of the federal government hence the commencement of work to gradually ease the suffering of motorists flying the route. The Southwest Zona Director of Federal Ministry of Works, Adeda Molakuti, explained that the federal government is investing massively in infrastructure. Lagos Ibadan is there, work is going on. This is a continuation of Lagos Ibadan. And very, very soon, we are going to award Ibadan to Oyo. You know, work will soon start on that. And then this is now Oyo to Ogbomosho to link Ogbomosho to Elori. Alongside with all the hydraulic structures as drainages, culverts, and uh, stone pitching, everything required for a durable road. At the road construction site of Oyo Ogbomosho Dua Karigwe, funding is regular and work done has reached 50%. The materials being used are the best you can ever use on any road. We will reduce the casualty and the accident in the road for sure, and everybody will enjoy from the expressway from Lagos Ibadan up to Ogbomosho in Logan. It is expected that the road construction works will be completed at the stipulated time in Ibadan. Shola Wahid, NTA News. And that's it from Ibadan. Lydia, it's back to you in Abuja. Good to see you. Same here. Thank you, Adebola. Nigeria is sustainably improving the capacity of its tax net to fully activate dormant tax windows for increased revenue generation to meet critical national demands. This was the position of key players in the nation's tax administration and management system during NTA's Tuesday Live program. Aubakar Akwanga reports. Nigeria's tax profile risen to trillions of net. The outlook for 2022 seems promising with various tax reforms and policies, including the Finance Act 2021, with the aim of putting the country on recovery paths. To ensure that they digitalize tax administration in Nigeria, information sharing among uh, revenue generating agencies in order to optimize revenue for the federation. A company that is registered in Nigeria is actually expected to file returns. So we're not saying they should not file. We only encourage them to come into the tax net, enjoy the benefits while they are still small. Stakeholders say macroeconomic transformations such as company income tax, personal income tax, and value-added tax, amongst others, are yielding desired results, but requires more commitment FRS is the only entity at the federation level that is authorized to collect stamp duty from transactions between corporations or between corporations and individuals or between a group of individuals like partnerships. It is the duty of government to ensure that these informal taxes are converted to formal taxes and that when people pay, they get the benefit for paying taxes. You go to audit a taxpayer and you see two, three different sets of accounts for the same taxpayer for the same period. And then you begin to see which of this is correct. As the nation works towards shifting attention from the oil sector, these key players are optimistic that a robust tax performance will trigger speedy economic growth and development in Abuja. Abubakar Akwanga, NTA News. Your state government has keyed into the Nigerian road safety strategy, which seeks to reduce road traffic crashes and fatalities to 0% by the year 2030. 
with the inauguration of multi-million Naira equipment to enhance operations of the State Traffic Management Agency. This is with a view to nipping in the bud high rate of auto crashes being recorded across the state highways. Inisa Suleiman reports. Coming cases of fatal road crashes across the state occasioned by overspeeding, reckless driving, as well as other dangerous habits led to the establishment of Yobe State Traffic Road Management Agency, ROTA, to bring sanity and assist in the enforcement of traffic rules and regulations. After recruiting 250 marshals for the agency, Yobe State government went ahead and invested more than 100 million naira through procurement of logistics equipment to enhance the agency's operation. This marks the official inauguration of the newly procured logistics for Irota by Governor Mimala Bumi to enable the traffic management agency effectively discharge its mandate. Saddened by the recent increase in rate of road traffic accidents on the federal highways and other roads in the state, which have claimed several lives and property. Motorists are hereby advised to always observe traffic laws, reduce speed, avoid overloading, ensure that their vehicles are always in good condition to be on the roads. also inaugurated to provide people of the state accessible reliable and affordable means of transportation, as well as improving the state's revenue base. In the Matru, Yunusa Suleiman, NTN. Boko Haram terrorists have changed tactics. The new approach is to attack critical infrastructure in a bid to paralyze the economy. The Nigerian army disclosed this at a training session in Abuja to inculcate the winning mentality of the troops. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa has details. The spike in terror attacks in northeast Nigeria has put security forces on the edge. The latest attacks reveal a change in tactics by the assailants. The Nigerian army authorities understand the shift is meant to affect the economy. That is why this forum is conveyed to update the troops on the new tactics. It has become expedient to review the current security architecture and to strategize to bridge observe gaps, as well as build the right fighting wheel to address the threats. Varied acts of insurgency, terrorism, kidnapping, and banditry from Boko Haram terrorists, Islamic State of West Africa province, to the indigenous people of Biafra and other terrorist organizations has continued to pose substantive threats to the nation. Our troops have, however, continued to respond assiduously to contain and decimate all adversaries. The task of defeating the terrorists is enormous, requiring both kinetic and non-kinetic approach. From the Nigerian Army Resource Center, Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. Still on security matters, personnel of the Nigerian police force drawn across the Federation are undergoing a two-week capacity building workshop at the instance of the Inspector General of Police, Usman Al-Kali Baba. The training is specifically on the operations and maintenance of mobile detection system for personnel under the Force Explosive Ordnance Disposal Chemical, Biological, Radiological and Nuclear Defense Command. A statement by the force indicates that the capacity building is part of the IGP's ongoing efforts at re-evaluating and re-strategizing performance level in meeting the core objectives of safeguarding the country against internal security threats. Meanwhile, the IGP urged personnel to put in use the skills and knowledge acquired in the collective fight against security threats and other criminal activities in the country. The capacity building is in collaboration with the Office of the National Security Advisor and other partners. We go over now to Benin, where Obehi is waiting with stories trending from that zone. Obehi, over to you. Hey, thanks, Lydia, for joining us here in Benin. The need for media professionals to always promote fairness decency and equity as core values of political and election coverages have again been emphasized 
the Director General of the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, Balam Balarabi Usman, gave the indication at a stakeholders' meeting on political broadcast held in Adoikiti as build up to Ekiti State governorship election. Kola Adebobui reports. The forum tagged Ekiti 2022, upholding fair play, decency, and equity in an electionary period, was an avenue that exposed media practitioners to various aspects of the Nigerian Broadcasting Commission's code relating to political coverages and broadcast, even as the state prepares for governorship election come June this year to avoid running foul of code and ethics of the profession. Playing the role of the watchdog, playing the role of the educator, voter education, and then ensuring that they have free access to all those different uh, political parties. The forum also featured an interactive session which afforded media practitioners opportunity to discuss and throw more light on gray areas that will help to usher in a new dawn for operators and employees in the media industry with the governorship election around the corner. We need the message, the message of fairness, the message of equity, and the message of um, uh, playing by the rule. A lot of broadcasters are particularly the independent presenters, are not aware of some of the things that we have been taught here today. The National Broadcasting Commission ever reiterates commitment to continue to regulate and monitor professional standards and ethics in Adwekiti. Kola Adibabuji, NT News. The Director General of the National Youth Service Corps, Major General Shaib Ibrahim, says the scheme is committed to tackling unemployment problem in Nigeria. This was during his one-day official visit to the NYC orientation camp in Kariakoko, Ondo State. Abiodun Oladipo reports. The visiting Director General of the National Youth Service Corps and his team were warmly received by both the core members and the staff of the scheme. And from there to the multi purpose hall, where Major General Shuhaib Ibrahim addressed core members in what could be likened to life changing gift. General Ibrahim emphasized on the essence of the skill acquisition and entrepreneurial development scheme, Said as a scheme to reduce youth receiveness even after the service year. Take advantage of the NYC. Use it as a platform, as a second source of success in life. So please, take the journey of the NYC. You must add value to the NYC. You must be security conscious. Don't endanger your safety. Please, you should be very, very careful. The visiting director general also helped in commissioning a senior staff quarters on the camp of the Ondo State NYC, where the camp director saluted the leadership style of General Ibrahim from Okegbe in Ikaria Koko, Ondo State. Abiodola Depo, NTA News. And that's it from Benin Asmao in our Sokoto Network Center. is standing by for more reports right after the break. But before we go for that break, let's remind you that you can follow this news broadcast live on our website at ntang slash live and on YouTube at NTA News Online. You can also visit our Facebook page at NTA Network News, Twitter handle at NTA News Now and on Instagram at NTA Network for updates. A new edition of TV Guide is out exclusively with Professor Umar Garba Dambata, Executive Chairman of the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC. We have unveiled the 622 as a toll free line through which consumers can be able to lodge their complaints. And we have provided Introducer 112 as a national emergency number. This edition is a compendium of mind-blowing stories for your reading pleasure, ranging from technology, entertainment, economy, media, politics, family, and lots more. Pick up your copy and get abreast with issues and trending features within our space. 
TV guide. Very incisive, very educative and compelling. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or any NTA station nationwide. TV guide, your indispensable companion. Candidates who are interested in gaining admission into NTA Television College JOS for the 2021-2022 two-year National Innovation Diploma Program are to apply for admission through the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board JAM. The courses available for application include Film and Television Production, Broadcast Journalism and Television Engineering Technology. Such candidates must have a minimum of five O-level credits in relevant subjects including English Language and Mathematics. For more information, please contact NTA Television College JAWS or the Marketing Registrar Announcer. Good evening and welcome to Sokoto on Nationwide. Sokoto State Government has expressed commitment to continue to provide Ramadan package for Muslims across the state during the month of Ramadan. Governor Amino Aziri Tumbol stated this at the opening of this year's tafsir organized by Jama Atul Isa. Salatu Bidi Awe Kamutu Sunnah across the nation with the aim of sensitizing Muslims on the significance of the holy months of Ramadan. Declaring this year's tafsir open in Sokoto, the state governor Amin Waziri Tumbol, represented by Commissioner for Religious Affairs Abdullahi Megundu, said 180 centers have been introduced to feed the less privileged members of the Muslim Ummah during the blissful months. The government has earmarked a huge sum of money to these uh, agencies, and they are doing this for the benefit of our Muslim Ummah. There is need for dua from all corners, from all Muslims, brothers and sisters, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to our aid to salvage our current situation. The National Preaching Committee of the Jamaatul Izal to Bidi Awe Kamatu Sunnah posted a Sheikh Abdul Nasser Abdul Muhi, represented by the Sokoto State Chairman of the organization, Imam Abakar Osama Mabira, admonished Muslims to be prayerful during the month for an end to insecurity and other challenges in the country. Chairman Orphans Feeding Committee in the state, Chike Huza Abubakar and Muhammad Adam Kalambayana, said all arrangements for a successful conduct of the tafsir have been concluded. All the stakeholders emphasized on the need for Muslims to use the fasting period to pray for peace in the state and the country and for Allah's rewards and blessings for Nigerians. In Sakwatu, Shio Muhammad Detti, NTA News. Zamfara State Universal Basic Education Board has organized a three-day training session for about 5,000 teachers and head teachers drawn from across the state. The training, which focuses on new methods of teaching literacy in primary schools, is part of the ongoing implementation of better education service delivery for all BESDA in the state. Jamil Ibrahim Guso reports. Since the inception of the present administration of Governor Bello Muhammad in Zamfara State, it has taken bold steps towards improving the state education sector through massive provision of infrastructures and instructional materials, as well as training of teachers and improvement of their welfare. It is in furtherance of this commitment that the State Universal Basic Education Board organized a three-day training session for teachers and head teachers drawn from across the 40 local government areas of the state. Zamfara State Commissioner for Education, Haji Azena Blaulgumi, represented by Permanent Secretary in the ministry, Malam Kabiru Atahiru, plugged up the training session on Jolie Phonics and Rana, organized under the Better Service Education Delivery for All Besda in Maradun. This government has promised to continue to accord education a pride of place by laying more emphasis on addressing the challenges of out of school children as the normal real child. And Executive Chairman of the State Basic Education Board, Malam Abubakar Ali Maradun, said the training holds simultaneously across the 40 local government areas of the state with a total of 4,974 participants. After the training, the mentors and coaches will follow the teachers to the classrooms immediately for mentor and support visits. There were goodwill messages from the state based consultant and its focal person, the Ubek State Coordinator, and the Chairman Private School Proprietors Association, who all underscored the importance of the training in facilitating effective teaching of literacy in schools. In Gusawu, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. 
And that's it from here. But before I take you back to Abuja, where Lydia is standing by, don't forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and our YouTube channel, NTA News Online. You can also visit our Twitter at NTA News Now, our Facebook page, NTA Network News, and Instagram at NTA Network for updates. Thank you, Asmao. The FCT Transport Secretariat is set to begin construction of 5.76 km rail track in the nation's capital. Mandate Secretary of the Secretariat, Zakari Angulu Dobi, revealed this during the inspection of the vandalized part of the Abuja Light Rail Track at the sta Stadium Station and Idu Trading Center. Onoza Yakubu has details. Expressing concern over the vandalized rail track, the Transportation Secretary Zakari Anguludobi explains that the Secretariat is working assiduously to go back to site for the construction of the 5.76 kilometer rail track and fixing of the vandalized areas of the track. He added that the Secretariat is also looking at the possibility of relocating some departments to the training center at the Idu train station due to the challenges of office spaces in Area 11. And what we saw is quite bad. Uh, I do know that when I assume office, I've been told of the, uh, the issue of vandalization. Uh, it's been captured. We have the intention to go back to sites or construction of 5.76 kilometers, but it will be out of play that I have this journey to go and see the possible way of relocating some of these office uh, spaces or accommodation at Idu without using the opportunity to again look at uh, part of the rail equipment. He further disclosed that the vandalism occurred as a result of lack of operation, hence the need for the speedy work on the vandalized track to ensure resumption of operation. Onoze and NT News. For effective and efficient economies, there is need for individuals, corporate organizations, and governments at different levels to change the pattern of financial dealings to be in tune with current realities. This was the thrust of the 19th inaugural lecture of the National Open University of Nigeria on what has finance got to do with it. The lecture is part of the academic activities of Professor Ganiat Adeshina Uthman of Economics Department, Faculty of Students to Emerging Global Financial Challenges, juxtaposing with the Nigerian contest, context that tends to defy remedies, especially in providing succor to average citizens. An individual in an economy have a direct relationship with that of the economic or financing of a nation. If the UK tries several varieties of monetary targets to feed the nation, Nigerian can. If the US, with national debt of over $30 trillion as of yesterday, which, is, which make it to become the most indebted nation in the world in terms of the absolute value of the debt, is also a power to reckon with. Then, what is wrong with Nigeria, the giant of Africa? The vice chancellor knowledge on the students also plays premium on research. More communities in Nassau State benefit from the World Bank funded project NewMap, aimed at addressing environmental challenges in the state. This is coming as three road projects executed by NewMap were inaugurated in Lafia. Aliu Tijani reports. Communities of Angonungu, Angwaliman, and Rice Mills, all in Lafia, are now wearing new look as their once deplorable road are now motorable, courtesy of New Map. The people are happy and turn out in mass to celebrate. Today, what has been as a bottleneck has been removed, despite the fact that the construction of this drainage and culvert has really increased our life. Governor Abdullah Isli commends new map for the intervention. He assures communities in the state of government commitment to address critical infrastructure to boost socio-economic activities in their areas. I want to thank you sincerely, really, for devoting the time, you know, and all the team from the World Bank and the contractors. I'm sorry that I have bothered you enough, but now you can see everybody is happy with us. You know, so that is the whole idea. For me, it's just to see those smiles on the faces of these people. 
Uh, this is one of the things that the project is set to do, which is to connect communities, connect people to marketplaces, and provide access road. Earlier, the new MAP delegation pays courtesy visit on the governor, where he assures them of sustained partnership for the development of the state. In Lafia, Aliuti Jenny, NTE News. 30 Nigerian producers, directors, screenwriters, and ace actors from the Nigerian movie industry had the opportunity to share insights with their UK counterparts on how to explore co-productions and expand their horizons in both countries. This was during a trade mission in Lagos, engaged, which engaged participants on how to explore opportunities available to them. UK's trade envoy to Nigeria, Helen Grant, said this is sequel to the responses received by the trade mission during series of creative sector webinars that was led by DIT Nigeria in 2021. The UK envoy before the trade mission in Lagos also met with the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, as well as the Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, to discuss on how to address obstacles in the course of doing business in Nigeria. Meanwhile, the UK is ready to host the Minister of Trade and Investment in London on the 26th of April for the Economic Development Forum, where both countries will address many market access barriers. The appearance of freshness and vigor are common characteristics of young persons. While the United Nations sees youths as persons between the ages of 15 and 24, Maureen Liu Ajom reports that the latest of this sensitization package put together by the National Orientation Agency is on the theme Campus focus aimed at redirecting Nigerian youths to embrace core values and morals that will make Nigeria great again. The Nigerian media is awash with reports of drug peddler, smuggled migrants, and traffic persons with their social network as well as other vices. Research also reveals that Nigeria presently faces a high rate of unemployment and conflict, and the youths are illegally migrating to other countries. Most of these youths get involved in drug trafficking and drug abuse, and oftentimes become stranded and take to drug peddling, commercial sex, and street begging, among other social vices, with the objective of changing this narrative and build a new Nigeria. The National Orientation Agency put together the Sensitization and Mobilization Forum to enlighten Nigerians to shun all forms of social vice. 60% of the workforce is among the youths. So we we'll target the youths, but to see how we can make them, you know, good citizens. Sensitize the students to be very serious with their story and then shun all negative vices. Now, they could have used the money, the money they will use to rehabilitate this people now. It's supposed to be used for the educational advancement of the society. But now it's been uh, diverted to another angle. Stakeholders know these values are prerequisites for sustainable transformation and national development. In Calabar, Maureen Leo Ajom, and in News. And that ends nationwide. Before we go, a reminder that you can always join NTA in the campaign against rape and rapists. I'm Lydia Ochi. Thank you for watching. Have a beautiful evening. Goodbye.